A little while ago, I told you guys about some strange things I did when I was a child. You guys wanted a part two, so here it is. More weird things I did as a kid. There is a link in the description if you haven't seen the first part. So I'm going to start where I left off last time. That being the trampoline. For some weird reason, my brother would always love to trick me and pretend he was dying after falling down on the trampoline. He would make it look like he landed badly on his arm or back when he clearly landed softly and wouldn't be hurt at all. He would then deliver the iconic line of, Tell mom, I'm dying. <laughs> this always somewhat scared me and I would never move. I never ever went inside and told my mom. He would lay there trying to convince me that this was life or death and I didn't spring into action even though I wasn't sure if this situation was serious or not. That's probably not the best thing. Imagine if he actually was hurt and needed me to help. Ow, oh, oh, oh. tell mom, I'm... Dying! Oh. Tell mom I'm dying! <laughs> oh, ah, ah. <laughs> Cringe. Okay, you guys wanted weird, right? Get ready for this one. You know how a lot of kids have imaginary friends and things like that? I took it one step way too far. You see, I was friends with the freckle I had on my hand. Let that sink in for a moment. A freckle! What was his name, you ask? It wasn't Fred, or John, or Tim, it was Mr. Man Dookie. I have no idea where that came from, but it doesn't end there. We used to have one of those old metal A-frame swing sets when I was a kid, and it was here where Mr. Man Dookie would come alive. I played this game, by myself of course, where I would have to cross over the slippery slide, over the swings, and get to the island on the other side without touching the ground. And below me was lava. How creative. Brace yourself for the weirdness once again, because my freckle, aka Mr. Manduki, was my guide on this epic quest for safe ground. I'm not completely sure on how that would work, because if I fell, he was coming with me whether he liked it or not. Whoa, whoa. So long, partner. No! <sighs> I am glad I finally got that off my chest. If anyone has done anything weirder than that, please let me know in the comments below so I don't feel alone. <laughs> something perhaps more common that I used to do and something that I still catch myself doing to this very day is walking around on my tippy toes. If I was walking from my bedroom to the kitchen, you bet I was walking on my tippy toes only. If I was walking through a massive shopping center all day, same thing, tippy toes. I didn't do this because my feet hurt or because I wanted to look taller. I just did it. Something about it was just more comfortable for me and I didn't consciously make the decision to walk like like that. It was just normal. And I would like to present this award to Jelly Jess. Why is she doing that? It looks like she's stepping on Legos. I've always really enjoyed baking and would help my mum make things like cupcakes and biscuits quite frequently. And by help, I mean I would slowly eat the batter as my mum does all the heavy lifting. Sometimes, however, I would prefer to cook on my own, by myself, without edible ingredients. I would dig up a bunch of dirt, throw it in a bucket, and then add water accordingly, creating a thick mud. This would form the base of my beautiful creation, but I needed other ingredients too, so I would collect various leaves from trees in our garden and add pieces of grass and sometimes even small rocks for extra flavor. After mixing the wet ingredients, I would slop the sludge into an upside down frisbee and sit it in the sun to air dry. One time I was outside making this delicious food and my cousin appeared. Hey there Jess, what are you- Oh my god. <laughs> mad, 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 mad. <laughs> Does she actually eat this stuff? Does she actually feed it to people? I've got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Since my meals were literally made out of dirt and leaves, nobody would eat it, including myself. But I would pretend to. This is so delicious. <laughs> this next one is pretty unusual, and I think I'm probably the only person who ever used to do this. You know those big tunnels along the freeways which have the lights the whole way through them? For reasons I don't understand, I would let out this fake crying noise every single time we would pass through them and it would continue until I was out the other end. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea why I did that. It's not like I was actually sad, I was perfectly fine. For the most part, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of person does that? And now every time I'm in the car with someone and we pass through one of these tunnels, they just have to stare at me or mock me about it. I wish I could just go back in time and slap my younger self in the face and tell her, you're gonna regret this in the future. You're gonna get bullied. I've got another great example of me being super helpful when I was younger, much like the baking story. I used to really enjoy washing the family car or trying to help at least. In hindsight though, I probably did such a terrible job that my mum would have to rewash that area anyway. But I mean, she appreciated it. Or maybe it was just the fact that I was trying. Who knows? It didn't matter. I enjoyed myself anyway. My brother used to make fun of me for how long I would stand there washing the car's number plate. Apparently, for most of the car wash, I was scrubbing away at this one spot that I had successfully cleaned ages ago. Then they'd check back much later and there I was still washing the number plate. Speaking of my brothers, they would always chase me around the house and try and rip out a few strands of my hair. If they were successful, they would show me the hair and I would be absolutely shattered because I believed there would be a huge bald spot on my head as a result. In reality though, it was like two hairs, but I believed I looked like Angelica's doll, Cynthia. I cannot let them get away with this. What they did is not acceptable. I must seek revenge. Oh, Jess, shut up. <laughs> oh, okay. Now for something different. When I was young, I was given an iPod Nano as a gift for Christmas. And this was my first time my brothers and I had access to a video camera. Do you remember the first time you had access to a camera? If so, I'm sure it was a tool to create nothing but pure cringe. You wouldn't believe the embarrassing videos we filmed on this thing. Yeah, we're gonna bop, 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 bop to the top. One of my most memorable clips was filmed in my room on a typical school night, right before our bedtime. My eldest brother had a guitar that he couldn't play, and my other brother was filming me waiting for something entertaining to happen. The following audio clips are 100% real and have been animated to represent the situation accurately. The first few seconds go like this. This song is called, it's your birthday and it's for me, for my birthday! Rock on, I call you! Uh, yeah, that's a reference, but that doesn't make it any less embarrassing. Anyway, the disgustingly bad guitar playing begins. My brother was supposedly going to sing a funny song or something, but the instrumental dragged on a bit. We became impatient. Right before my brother started singing, for some reason I started to sing happy birthday. It was no one's birthday. And then this happened. Happy birthday to there you. Was a real oh! <laughs> I was sitting on the edge of the bed and my brother with the iPod smashed the camera into my forehead, which made me lose my balance and fall backwards off the bed. There was a gap between my bed and the wall, so I fell back and whacked my head into the wall before I hit the ground. And that's pretty much it. The last five minutes of the video clip consists of me crying and my brother's freaking out about what to do. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding on? <laughs> that was over a decade ago now, and this is my wall today. Yep, that's from my head. And now to end this video, I want to share some poetry with you. The following pieces of literary excellence were from a four to five year old version of me, noted down in a book by one of my brothers. I stumbled across this book recently whilst going through our old toy cupboard and well, I should just read this to you. The title is Silly Things What Jessica Done. What a great start. <laughs> 
You're a dumb bum. Dumb toilet. Smarties in the toilet. Bum in the toilet. People on the table. A toilet on the table. Paddles in the plug hole. Toilet in my bum. Hey guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. I also want to give out a huge thanks to Sultan as he lended his voice throughout the two parts. He did such an awesome job and if you haven't checked him out already, I highly recommend. The links will be on the screen and in the description box below.